Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name's Nicole and today we are going to do these beautiful cherry blossoms. How do you paint white in nature? We want to get these beautiful displays of these very fair petals and how does one go about doing that in watercolor? Do we leave the paper white or do we want a little bit of dimension here? So today I'm going to show you how it's done. So I have my palette here. This is Oprah Pink. This is Bright Pink. And I think this is a manganese blue. Just whatever blues I have in my palette. Um, this is a Perusian blue. I have cadmium yellow here. And then some various greens. My favorite green gold. Some sap green and shadow green. I am using the Beihong cotton watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. Like I said, this paper really is... Fantastic. It behaves a lot like arches and so far I'm really enjoying painting on it and it's a lot less expensive. So this is a block but I wanted a border and so I taped it. Well, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is wet our petals. So the first thing I do when I look at something that's white, I try to decide if it is a warm white or a cool white, because that's how we represent white, is by painting kind of like the shadows that we see on that object. So I mixed my pink with my blue a little bit, and definitely this one here is more on um, the cool side, this petal. So I'm starting by putting some of those very soft moves in there. And then I'm going to pick up my pink. We want to get all our main colors in while our paper is still wet. Now as you're working on the petals, if you're worried about the petals having dried too much, you can always re-wet them before you go back into them. So these two, I think I will just wet a little bit. Now where I want some brighter pinks, I'll come in with the Oprah. Putting in those shadows, those purpley shadows, and then just softening some of those edges. And so I'm going to just paint in the shape with clean water, but I'm gonna avoiding the yellow center. So you do want to paint around that. I want that to be nice and bright yellow, and I don't want uh, any hues of pink uh, overlapping there. Always starting with your lightest colors. So this is my purple. And definitely see some purple in the back of there, some here, and it's a lighter pink. And see how pretty that is, how just very soft it is because our paper is wet. I'm not pre-wetting this because they are quite dark and the color that I'm choosing is going to be kind of like my underpainting for the bud. That's actually a really pretty color. So I'm going to mix the red and green together to get a dark color, a shadowy color, and come in with my shadowy area here. Almost like a blue transparency to this leaf. It looks a little blue. So I'm putting that in there. Dropping that in where I see those blue tones. Along the edge of the leaf. So as you can see, these blooms have a lot of pink to them. But the parts that are really white we represent that by those different colors of blues and purples, basically painting in the shadows. So you're going to continue around this bunch of blossoms and work all of them in the same manner. So we're going to let that first layer dry. 
Now for the second layer, I am just going to up my vibrancy, especially on these buds. Now to get that last little bit of realism and punches of color, I'm re-wetting some of those edges where I'm going to put that bright Oprah pink, saving the brightest colors for last and drawing in my veins on my petals with a script liner brush. So you notice when I wet those areas, how much vibrancy you can get from that Oprah pink. It's such a gorgeous color. So go around all your flowers and detail each one. Add in some stronger punches of color here and there. And now for the centers, first putting in my lightest green gold colors, the sap green and the yellow. There are a few leaves surrounding this bouquet of blooms and I'm getting those in starting with my lightest colors. You'll work the leaves the same way that we work the flowers, wet on wet and from light to dark. Adding in that really dark shadow green to the edges to define those shadows. This makes great textural effects on the leaf itself. Now there's some negative spaces in between the leaves. Just fill those with some very dark shadowy mixtures. Softer shadows for the petals. That is it for the flowers. Now we're going to work on the background. And I'm taking my time wetting the background really, really well with my flat brush. You could also use a round brush to get into those nooks and crannies around all the petals and leaves. So I decided for like a, a greenish brown background. So I'm using sepia, that's one of my favorite browns to use, and marine blue. And when I mix these together, I could get a very, very dark background. So I'm starting in one corner and I'm working my way around and I'm trying to increase that darkness and keep adding paint as I go along. But as you know, watercolor does dry a lot lighter and so there will be two coats required to get a very dark background. So as you paint the different sections, you can re-wet areas just as you go along. If your paper's starting to dry, just re-wet it.
You could also make fun shapes in the background like I am doing with doing some negative painting. In the end, I decided to just paint over those really darkly. You can see that faint outline of a leaf there, but I just really wanted a very dark background, so then I just decided to get rid of that. But that is a possibility, is to make some different shapes with negative painting. That's always fun. To bring it all together, a little spritz of water to get some textural effects, and then you're finished. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you like my artwork, please subscribe and hit that like button.